Hello there. So I'm going to show you how to make my Sea Song zigzag scarf. And um, the yarn I'm going to be using is Mary Maxim Studio. And it's the color Cobalt Glass. And it's 65% acrylic, 35% wool. And it's a thinner, bulky. Um, to give you some idea, at 100 grams, it's 164 yards. So um, that tells you that it's it's uh, on the thin side for a bulky, but it's still, um, you know, classified as a bulky. And um, you need to use odd pegs on your loom. And you can make this as small or as big as you like. If you make it small, like we're going to do on this one, we're making a zigzag scarf. But if you used more pegs, you could have a zigzag shawl or um, even a zigzag blanket. Because this one doesn't have short rows, you can make it as uh, thin or as wide as you like. And um, there you go. Now, I'm using 15 pegs, and for 15 pegs, I'm going to do 10 rows because on all my swatches, that gave a really nice zigzag. So that would be a ratio if you went bigger or smaller for 15 pegs on a wide gauge loom um, you go 10 rows so for um, 30 pegs you would go 20 rows that gives you an idea or um, if you want to have longer zigs and zags or shorter zigs and zags you could do that too feel free now this is a three-quarter inch gauge loom and how I've set it up I've used 15 pegs I've got a marker on my first peg and I've got a marker on my last peg. Then you count in three, one, two, three, and then the next one. So it's the fourth one in, you put a marker on. And so it's an even peg, number four peg, and then on number six, eight, 10, 12, and as, you know, as, as big or small as you wanna go, you put on the markers. So you'll have a marker, no marker, a marker, no marker, a marker, no marker. So that's how you set up the loom. And then um, we'll just go ahead now and cast on. So I'm just going to take the yarn, make a simple slip knot by making a loop, putting the yarn through it and pulling, and then putting it on peg one, and snugging it up. And then all I'm going to do is take the working yarn and my hook, and I'm gonna go inside this loop right here and take the working yarn and scoop it up. And I can put down my loom hook, keeping this tight. And I'm just gonna go around peg one and pull the working yarn through. Round peg three, pull the working yarn through. Take the loop behind peg four, pull the working yarn through. And we just keep doing that. And it'll give us a nice chain looking cast on. It's one of the crochet cast ons, but um, we're not gonna use a crochet hook. We're just using our fingers. <laughs> but it gives us a nice edge. And then we're almost here. And we just slip it on the last peg like that, pull it and then we can just knit it over. And that's all we have, that's all we need to do there. Okay, now we're gonna do owl eye. So to get started, we're just gonna go over this peg 
and over this peg like that. Now wherever we are, we're going to call that peg one. And to do owl eye, we're just going to wrap peg one and two in front like that and knit them off, keeping it nice and loose. So we're at peg one. I'm going to go over peg one and two and just knit them over. Peg one, over peg one and two, knit it over. We're on peg one, over one and two, and knit it over. And we just keep doing that. Now a lot of times when people do a cast on, they do a row of knit and a row of purl. And you have to do that because both knits and purls will curl. You have to balance them. But owl eye, when we do two rows, won't curl. It's balanced. So we're going to do two rows of owl eye. Okay. If you need to actually look at the stitch more, I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel that you can watch. But you can see I'm just going over the two pegs and I'm keeping it nice and loose. Like, see this is loose. This isn't tight. And then over here again. And I'm just making sure that's nice and tight there. Okay. And then we're going to come back over and do the second row. Now, how we're going to knit this is we're going to be going one direction with the stitch. And then we're going to change directions to get the zag. So the zig is one direction and the zag is another direction. And all we're going to do is knit like a flat panel. There'll be no short corners. It's just straight doing the same row again and again and again. Well, the same two rows. Okay. All right, so now we can go into the Sea Song stitch. Okay, so for our edge treatment, so we're just going to go over this peg and over this peg and then we we'll just come to this peg and go over it and then we're going to stay there. And now we're going to move our pegs and the way I think of it to help me so I remember that this has to happen is I think we have to get off of this, pe this uh, peg that's marked we always have to take that loop off. So I think of this as a hot potato peg. And so we always take the yarn, we take it off the hot potato and we put it on to the peg next to it. Now this direction is always a little awkward for me because I can't really see behind what I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, here's the next hot potato. We take it, we put it on to the next peg over. And it's really easy when you have owl eye, it, it keeps it nice and loose so it's easy to move them over. Next peg with the marker, move it over. <laughs> I'm doing it mostly by feel since I can't see what I'm doing and I got to keep a good camera angle for you. And there they are, they're all moved over. Okay, now all we're going to do is we're going to owl eye down there but how we're going to owl eye down there so here we are on peg one we're just going to go over the peg with the marker the empty peg over to the next peg that has the two loops on and then we're just going to knit them off and we can take these two yarns as one and if they're tight then you can just take them over one at a time it doesn't really matter okay and now you're here going to go behind 
over peg one, skipping that one over to the next peg and just knit them off. Peg one over and just knit them off. Or peg one over and knit them off. That's pretty easy on peg one over, knit them off. Peg one over. Oh, well, <laughs> no, here we are back here. So now we just go over all three of these. And um, actually, because we are all the way here, we're going to start our treatment. So we go over this and then we're always going to purl these three pegs, but we'll start that next row. So we go over just like this. And we're just going to do that so that we don't curl because it can have a little bit of a curl in it. Okay, I'm just going to get out some yarn. But yeah, we'll start at the end of this row because this is still going to be uh, really flat because of our two rows of owl eye. Okay, so then we're going to come back around the front and we're just going to knit these two together and come over here and knit this one. And then we're going to start doing owl eye right here. And we're just going to do owl eye all the way down. And so that's all it is. Row one, moving the peg, the hot potato. Row two, a row of owl eye. And that's it. And we're just going to do that until we have got um, 10 of the eyelets formed. And so I just count my eyelets. And then I don't have to count rows or anything. <laughs> Pretty easy to just look at your eyelets. But we'll take a look at it when we get to the end of this row. Okay, now we're going to start with the edge treatment at the end of the row. So we're just going to take this peg and purl it. And then we're going to purl the next peg. And then we're going to knit the last peg, come back and just knit them over like that. And then we're here and we'll start moving over the hot potatoes. So we go over with the hot potatoes. So that's all it is. Over with the hot potatoes. Okay, and now there's the eyelet, see? The eyelet is forming. So like I say, I count 10 eyelets and then it's time to reverse direction. And then I'll show you how to reverse direction. But we'll do another um, couple rows of this to make sure you've got it, okay? So here we are, peg, we're on peg one. We go over the empty peg. We go over to the peg that has the two loops on it, knit it off, over and knit them off, over and knit them off. Peg one over to the one that's got the two and knit them off, and knit them off, and Oh, now we've done that. We come over here, we do the purl, and we do the purl here. So we only have the purls going one way, and um, that's all we need. And then we come back, 
knit these over, come over here, knit this one, and now we just do owl eye all the way over. Okay, so I think you've got it. So I'm just gonna um, take, we're just gonna take a quick look. Okay, we're ending here because I gotta undo this knot here anyway. And as you can see now we have two eyelets. So yes, we just count, count up till you have 10 eyelets and I will meet you up there and show you how to get the zag after we've got the zag. Okay, so I just wanted to show you it here. I've got one, two, three, four, and I'm doing the, well, better to look this way, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm doing number six right now, eyelet. So only another four to do before we change, but I was gonna show you how you can see how it's slanting. That's how it's gonna zigzag. So it's a lot longer here and shorter here. And that's just the nature of the way the stitches are working. But anyway, I'll do a close up so you can see what it looks like at this point. It's got the nice eyelets in here. And the other side looks nice too. There we go. And I can take a look at our cast on edge. It just looks like that, like a braided look. And it's laying nice and flat. Okay, so I'll just do the other four rows and then show you how to uh, change direction. Uh, you can stay with me um, if you'd like as we do a row. So I just moved over the hot potatoes and then we just dowel eye over the whole thing. Like that. It actually uh, goes really fast and it's really fun to do this. And I just really, really like, we do the pearls now, um, that doesn't have the short rows and uh, feels so different to do than the other one. It's just as fun, but um, you're just doing a flat panel. So this one actually uh, seems to go faster. And then we owl eye back. Oh, it doesn't take very long to do this. And that's all uh, you're doing. And it's the nature of um, the way we're moving the stitch to, to have it uh, go slanted. And I'm slowing down the slant a bit also by coming back in the owl eye. So it just makes a really nice, nice um, zigzag. And so this is different than the Seasong flat panel I did because this one, you do the row of owl eye in between. Whoopsie, I got talking and went too far. So if that ever happens, you can take out the, the stitch and go back. Stitch back on in here. Take off the one stitch. There we go. I forgot to do the pearls. <laughs> so just do the pearls. Just have these two pearls on these two pegs. And then we knit over and go back. and go back to here and then move over the hot potatoes again. So yeah, I'll meet you up when we're ready to uh, start the zag. Okay, so I have now done my 10 rows and um, um, I went from the back and counted one or t 10 uh, eyelets, I mean, which is really 20 rows, you know, past the cast on and everything. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10 eyelets 
and 15 pegs. And, um, well, oh, this is tight there. Uh, see what this looks like. You can see it's slanting. Uh, hard to see, but it is slanting like this. So my loom is straight. Here's my loom being straight. And as you see, this is slanting this way. Okay, so now we're ready to change direction. Now how we change direction is I have this little marker peg and that told me that I'm doing moving my pegs going towards this. So every time I moved over one of these hot potatoes onto the next peg, I was moving towards this one. It told me I was going this direction in case I have to put the work down. So then I take the peg and I'm putting it over on this side and this tells me now I'll be moving this way. So in order to be able to move this way, we're going to do one extra row of owl eye to get down there. So we go over this peg and this peg and we'll just do a complete owl eye row down. And that will get us down there. And so that was the zig we did. Now we're going to do the zag. <laughs> the zag is always going to be going the opposite direction. Okay, so here we are. And then I'm going to knit this over, knit that one over, and then go to the next peg and knit it over in preparation to moving over the hot potato pegs. So this time we're going to be moving them this way. So this yellow peg is going to get moved over onto this one, this one onto this one. So we always have the eyelets in the same place, basically, because this is the, the peg. We're always taking it off, but we're just changing the direction. And there we go. And then we go over them the same way we did on the other side. We go over like owl eye. And skipping that peg, going right over like it doesn't exist, coming over here, wrapping like that out, like how will I? We're here, we surround that peg, go over, and oh, it's exactly the same thing. We're just doing this the opposite direction. And this is all we do all the way through. <laughs> So we're ready to bind off. Okay, so we're at this peg, right? And now there's two ways. You could go like this and purl it. I like to purl it this way. It just looked better when I did the swatches when I did it this way, but it wasn't a big difference. I did a lot of swatches of this to get it working perfectly right. Over. And we just come back. And we just owl eye back. We just do it the same way we did the other direction. And then we'll take a look at it, but it's too soon to really tell that we're ch changing direction very much. But we'll take a look at it anyway. Oop. Putting the yarn a little bit. It's a nice roving yarn. I actually really like this one. It gets a little thicker and a little thinner here and there, but it makes it look, um, I don't know, more uh, authentic to, to having a wool content, I think. Okay, and then we come down to here. So we're going to purl.
You can get away without doing pearls at all. Um, but the thing is, is that you're going to curl slightly in and you don't want that in a, in a long piece like this. You want it to be nice and flat all the time. Okay, so it's too soon to see that we're switching direction. But if you really look at it, we were coming up this direction and look, now we're going this way. So we're starting to do the zigzag. So now you're gonna do 10 eyelets this way and when you count them, you'll see that you start to count the one going the opposite direction. You'll clearly see it when we have more, but you'll see these are all coming this way and then this is starting to come this other way. So that'll be number one. And so you count 10 eyelets and then you change direction again, but we'll go a little bit further along and uh, take a look and you'll be able to see. So I'll meet you up again. Okay, I've done a couple more rows and now you can begin to see how it is zigzagging. So and we're looking at the inside actually. But here it is, and uh, you can see that it's come here, and it's going up here, and over here. You see it's coming here, this is the point, and then it's starting to go up. So, there it is, becoming the zigzag. And then as soon as we, now when you count up, here's your 10 rows, and then you'll see that right here, there's only one thread instead of the what you normally see over here. And that's because that's the owl eye row coming across here. But if you pull on this, you'll easily see that these are all going this way. This is starting to go this way. So you're one, two, three, and you're starting your fourth row. So these to count. Every time you hit 10 rows, you're going to reverse direction. And uh, you don't have to use my method, but for me, I would be moving the pin over here, do the extra row to get over on this side so I can head back this way and uh, then do that. So uh, if you had used a thicker material, you would have had smaller eyelets, but um, we're, we're far enough away from the loom now that you can see how it looks with the thin bulky on the three quarter inch gauge. So you could be lacier or you could uh, have it so that it's um, a tighter weave and you can actually have a really wide zigzag, a whole blanket if you'd like, or a shawl or um, you know, very versatile that way. So um, the video is getting long, so I'm gonna pause it and um, I will start up a video when I'm close to the end and ready to bind off and we can have a look at it. So I'll meet you then. So the Sea Song Zigzag has gotten very long now and I'm ready to bind it off. So yeah, here's the where we started with the zigzag. Right there. And um, yeah, gotten pretty long here. <laughs> and there it is, still zigging and zagging. Here all the way to here. And I'm uh, at 55 inches, which is what I decided that I wanted. So now to bind off, all we do is we do two rows of owl eye and then we'll do the bind off. So um, you remember how to do the owl eye. <laughs> so the two rows of owl eye. And So well, that's how we do the two rows of owl eyes. So I'll meet you back when you've finished uh, and you've done your two rows. Okay, so I did my two rows of owl eye and I'm back here. And then all I'm going to do is take my yarn and take it to the end here. And then um, back again. So I want to do it about two and a half times for lengths. 
and then just cut this yarn and then we just uh, put it in a needle like that okay and then we're just going to come over here and take uh, tighten that up a little bit and take the working yarn between here and then we're going to go down peg two and pull it and up peg one okay like that and then tighten that there we go and then we're just going to go around so behind here tightening it as we go and we're going to go down the new peg peg three up the peg before tightening as we go and then around the back and down the new peg up the peg we just did tighten and then around and down the new peg up the peg we just did and tighten down the new peg up the peg we just did round and tighten down the new peg up the peg we just did tightening and around we want to keep this nice and tight because the pegs are holding it apart and it'll keep it loose so down the new peg up the peg before tightening behind down the new peg and up peg we just did before around the back tighten and I like to tighten that way first and then around the back okay and then down the new peg up the old peg tighten and behind down the old peg up the new peg tighten behind down the old peg up the new peg tighten I tighten that way then this way and down the new peg up the old peg tighten and behind and I think I can shorten this now a little bit <laughs> I can see I'm almost done <laughs> okay down the new peg up the old peg tighten around the back down the new peg up the old one tighten back around and then um, we're just going to go down the new peg and then I'm just going to go okay, the tightness and I'm just going to go down one more time so I can actually knot in this, keeping it tight. And there we go. So that's done. And then we're just going to take our loom hook and put my needle there and take it off the loom. There we go. 
When I first take it off, it looks like a bunch of loops, but we will stretch it out. Okay. Then we're just going to There we go. And there it is. See, it looks like that. And um, we wanted it to match this one. And so they are, uh, look at this. They are the same length. And there they, uh, get this one straight. And you can see they're very similar the way they look on both ends. So that's why I like to do this cast off. Then we're going to take this and weave it in. There we go. And um, got a nice zigzag end to our scarf. And then we just uh, take the needle again and we're just going to weave this end in. Okay, so which way was the front? <laughs> the both sides look so good, but this is the front. So we're going to take it around to the back. And I'm just going to weave it in here and there. sure we pull it so that um, we don't uh, have it too tight and then I'm just going to put a little knot in it because I just want it to be that extra bit more secure and then I'm just going to hide the knot in here and uh, weave it in a little bit more and uh, Weave it back the way I came. But you don't have to put a knot. The weaving is, is usually good enough alone. I just um, want to be real sure. And then um, you've weaved it in enough and you're sure it's going to stay. You just cut it off and that's it. You're done and do the other end. I couldn't wait and so I did the exact same thing on the other end. So there's nothing here. This is all done and there's the zigzag scarf all done. So I hope you enjoyed it and um, um, take a closer look at it again. Yeah, see it looks pretty nice. And your other uh, side looks just as good. And it ha is a softer zigzag than the, the garter stitch variety or even my owl eye one, but it doesn't have any short rows and it was uh, very easy to do. I got it all twisted, <laughs> but um, there it is. So, okay, until I see you again. Bye.